Hey everyone, welcome to a special bonus Locked on Lakers for Saturday. Brian Kamenetsky, Andy Kamenetsky, Lakers miss out on a big opportunity to move up in the Western Conference standings. Can they get it back on Sunday? That's next. You are Locked on Lakers. Your daily Los Angeles Lakers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks to everybody for uh, for making Locked On Lakers your first listen of every day, Monday through Friday, and also on Saturdays, sometimes. Uh, always here for you, never behind a paywall, ready to talk Lakers. Uh, Locked On Lakers on YouTube, zipping past 13,000 subscribers. Uh, that's where you go to see the show and participate in a great community of Lakers fans. Talk to them, talk to us. We love to scroll through those comments. Uh, wrap that stuff into the show and all of that. So um, tough, tough, tough night at the crypt for the Lakers. They lose to Minnesota uh, 110 to 102 in a game that was, uh, you know, generally close. And the Lakers fought back, tried to make something of it, but a uh, huge opportunity to move up in the Western Conference standings because. New Orleans lost and Utah lost and the Clippers lost. And if the Minnesota Timberwolves had lost to the Lakers, uh, the Lakers would have 33 losses tied with all the teams that I just named. They would have been in a statistical tie for uh, 8, 9, 10 and a whisker behind the Clippers and the Timberwolves. So Andy definitely a missed opportunity, to say the least, on Friday night. Yeah, I mean, the, those other teams ahead of them losing is what keeps this from being just a flat-out, unbridled disaster. But it really is bad for the Lakers to miss opportunities in front of them given how little margin for things not going well or margin for not winning winnable Yeah, they, just, they don't have a lot of games left. What is it, 18, yeah. 18 games left now? I mean... Um, that you know, you just don't have the time to to not win, and you know, we 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 both thought like fifteen and eight. That's what we said coming out of the uh, out of the uh, the All Star break. Um, they've now used two of the eight, um, and this was a game where you really would have liked to hold on to that. You know, still see yeah, Phoenix, and- still see Memphis again. You know, there's just there's some there are enough tough games out there that you don't want to have to claw them back against the the better teams in the league. Yeah, and I mean, what makes this frust- – it was frustrating to watch but also allows different ways to look at it. Minnesota without the Timber – I mean, Minnesota without Carl Anthony Towns, um, although they've been playing a little bit better lately. They've played well in L.A., if nothing else. They beat the Clippers mm-hmm. right before beating the Lakers. That should be an opportunity for the Lakers to capitalize, even without LeBron, even without D'Angelo Russell, though we will talk about – the ways their absences were dramatically felt in this game. The the truth is the Timberwolves outplayed the Lakers. I mean, they they oh yeah found, no they, they, I, I completely agree. They found more ways to capitalize on the absences of LeBron and D'Lo than the Lakers found ways to capitalize on no Carl Anthony Towns there, and you know the. We'll get into this as well with Anthony Davis. He was the only guy that was prolific offensively at all. He had 38 points, 12 of 22 from the field, 12 of 14 from the line, but six turnovers, two of them on moving screens that got AD in foul trouble in the first half. And this was one of those nights where you're reminded they need AD to be damn close to perfect And even if he can't be perfect, the reasons why he isn't perfect matter a lot. Mm -hmm. And this was one of those games where obviously it's not all on AD. Nobody showed up offensively more than him. And, you know, he did a lot of things well in this game, but the things that he did not do well when you need everything from your star really shined through. It, it is, and I, you know, we were texting back and forth a little bit during the game after it. Like, I think I'm giving. I, I think I thought he played better, maybe a little bit than you did. Both of us agree 
he was part of the issue. And the, La- the, the Lakers really lost this game, you know, not so much down the stretch, but in the first six minutes of the of the second half. Like they just AD got it, not just badly outplayed by Rudy Gobert in those first five, six minutes of the third quarter. He was outplayed through a lack of aggressiveness that I felt like really set the tone for the Lakers coming into that second half Mm -hmm. because the Lakers, you know, Darvin, this is as mad as Darvin Ham has sounded after any game, any loss, even frankly, all year, no, even losses where I think Darvin should have been more mad than this. Yeah, where they played significantly worse than this or with, with less energy or less effort. Yeah. Darvin went off on the effort and energy in this game. And you and I didn't agree uh, with each other. I I saw what Darvin was talking about. You didn't see it as much. But where I thought that that flatness was most apparent was the way they came out to open the second half. And a lot of that to me, to be honest, and again – It feels weird to say this about Anthony Davis on a night where he had 38 points, but I thought he was part of the flatness Mm -hmm. that that the Lakers opened with. I think that's fair. I think what it is is like it. there are nights where without LeBron, particularly in the lineup, and certainly without D'Lo and and LeBron available, where Davis is going to need to be damn near perfect. And I thought he was. I thought he was. I thought he played a really good game. Like overall, if you overall he did play a good game. If you put not everything game. in to to, and this is why I think I'm not as you know kind of hung up on you know or not, or whatever the right you know. It's he played a really good game. I thought overall, front to back, end to it. Like, but they needed perfection on a night like tonight because the the, the rest of the team really wasn't there. And I thought. Um, I thought it was really, you know, Darwin had talked about the energy, and I think a lot of that comes from not allowing this team to be, um, and this is the right way to do it, you know, you to to wallow in any way in what they don't have available to them right now. I thought Minnesota had a fantastic game plan defensively. Yes, they did. I thought the way they came out, they put enormous pressure on anybody in the Lakers backcourt holding the ball. And, you know, with when you have LeBron, when you have D'Lo, when you have guys who are used to that and and playing, you can punish that. But when it's Dennis Schroeder, who is, you know, a a, a legitimate NBA point guard, but has never been known as a Chris Paul-style organizer of offenses, probably playing on a bum ankle and just wasn't having a very good game until way too late. And then your next guys in line are, you know, as a guard, Malik Beasley, who is not a ball handler and not an initiator. He is a finisher off of those things. You have Austin Reeves, who is, you know, certainly a capable ball handler, but is really more of a connecting player, I think, as a guard than a you know, what you what you would consider to be a a a prototype lead guard. He That's is a him. he's a secondary, or as I often like to say, thirdary. Ball right. handler and more ball handler. He's a as a great connector as a passer, but right. as a you know a primary ball handler, that extra pressure, you know, Lonnie Walker's not that good at it either. That extra pressure that those guys are putting against. Not only do you have guys who are doing things that they're not necessarily used to doing or super well equipped, they're doing it against far more intense pressure. So, and I just thought I thought I thought Minnesota had a really good game plan and it made it extraordinarily difficult for the Lakers to find space. And where, to me, that was most obvious was in that third quarter where, you know, Darvin said they were going, we went too much side to side. Well, yeah, because they couldn't get downhill because they didn't have the, the, the guys. Um, they needed to hit a couple more shots. They needed to, they needed to do better than what was it? 31 or 32% from three. Like they, they were just, they needed, they needed to be a little bit better. Um, as a group tonight than, than they were. I didn't think they were terrible. They certainly cared, uh, but they didn't play well. In that, I agree with Darwin. They were, if you define flat as not executing well and not playing well, I would agree. If you define it as not playing hard, I would disagree. I think they were playing hard. 
if there's such a thing as playing hard without necessarily always seeming to be playing with urgency, I would say that's mm-hmm. what it felt like a lot during this game. It was, um, it was this, a grind, that game yeah, for them. And, every every and, possession for them was a grind. Yeah, and I mean, this is also where, too, you see AD's limitations as somebody that you can truly run an offense through mm-hmm. as a hub. Like, he, he is, you know, he's an incredible outlet for your offense as a finisher. And if you have, I think, the proper spacing that can come with having LeBron out there, D'Lo out there, or both of them out there, AD can be good at finding open guys off cuts or stuff like that, but he's not somebody that you can set up, you know, to set up shop and have him find the guys or, you know, work, work out of the post the way a Jokic or even like an Embiid yeah. can do. Like, they really need D'Lo back. Tonight's game gets to really one of the things that I'm, I'm most concerned about. And, you know, we can wrap and see what, you know, what happens on, on Sunday. It, you know, the, when they won the other night, like that was a great win. Come back, you know, you're playing Oklahoma City, you come back and win that game. You're, but it was a grind. And you look at, and they, but they pulled it out. And now you look at, at Friday's game and that was a grind and they couldn't pull it out. And the, the common theme <laughs> throughout all of these games, particularly until Russell comes back, is the amount of effort that's going to be required to get through them. Hopefully win more than you lose. But I, I am very concerned they're going to wear themselves down by the end of the year. They're just going to run out of juice. First half, um, particularly, they were you know being outrun. You know they they couldn't get moving. You know in that sense. And so, like if they can't find ways to generate easy offense, the, the, it's 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 going to be tough. You know in and but uh, you know it's going to happen. Like they had the wrong. They they were lacking an ingredient tonight that they really needed in terms of initiating against really intense ball pressure. Yeah, I mean they 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 were just too e- they're too easy to either turn over right now or just discombobulate to where you can't run an offense. So you, I was going to say but before we go just you and I had talked about at the beginning of this stretch without LeBron that, you know, muddy games could be good for the Lakers that that could mean things are going okay. But that was also before we realized they wouldn't have D'Angelo Russell on top of it. Once you're missing your oh, yeah, two you best ball dudes. handlers, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like they they need things they need things to loosen up a bit. And again, hopefully, right. D'Angelo and, plays on and Sunday. What I, and what I meant by that too is like you know, look, if they can figure out ways to get easy, I just think it's going to be easier for other teams to find easy offense than yeah. it is for the Lakers. They're going to have to play incredibly hard, but also get time. Like Anthony Edwards just hit a. A really timely three when the Lakers made it look like they had a little bit of momentum going and whatever. But you know, you're just you're not gonna win a lot of games. Like kudos to them for you know, turnovers were reasonably in control for for a lot of the game and they made their free throws 83%. But Davis was really the only guy who got to the line. You just can't they can't win shooting 42%. That's just not that's not enough conversion in their offense. Uh, but anyway, we'll see what happens on Sunday. Um, this, this was a frustrating one and a tough one. Um, probably going to be some disagreement on the Lockdown Lakers YouTube boards, um, about, you know, whether Darwin was right, wrong, were they playing hard? Were they not? Were they flat? Were they not? Whatever. Um, but now you really got to win on Sunday, (laughs) really got to win on Sunday. And again, as you mentioned, Steph Curry expected to play. So, uh, plenty more to look forward to Andy through the weekend, but, uh, right now it's time to look forward to this. Locked on Lakers being brought to you by BetterHelp. And unfortunately, yep. life or the Lakers season right now does not come with a user manual. And when it's not working for you, life, that is, it's normal to feel stuck. Navigating life's challenges, whether professional or emotional, can bring on anxiety, uncertainty, whether it's a career change, new relationship, becoming a parent. I, I know from personal experience how much therapy helped me during a really difficult period in my life involving me and my family and just sitting down and talking with a professional was huge and better help has connected over 3 million people with licensed therapists it's convenient it's accessible anywhere 100 online no waiting rooms no traffic and it's affordable just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched up with a therapist and if things aren't clicking you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime so if you want to live a more empowered life therapy can get you there visit betterhelp.com locked on 
today to get 10% off your first month. Again, that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. Locked on Lakers also brought to you by FanDuel. Uh, we are in the deepest of the stretch run in the NBA season, and it is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. It's bonus bets uh, back if your first bet doesn't win. So download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. And then you can bet on everything. From the money line to point scores to threes drained. And FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at bigger payouts with the same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to uh, get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. We'll see everybody Sunday after the uh, Warriors game. 